Hello, this is the Gamer Unknown, and welcome to a tutorial tips and tricks video for Sky Rogue. To start off, you may not know what Sky Rogue is. is. It is a third person flight simulator with a multitude of planes and weapons, uh, procedurally generated terrain, multiple enemies with dynamic effects, in a roguelike format, and it is made by Nihilocraft. So, if you don't know, roguelike means that once you die, all of your progress is essentially lost. All of the scrap, which I'll talk about later, is lost, plus all your modifications and progress towards uh, getting to new islands. And you cannot save at any point. Death is very final, and it is important to take that into account when you are uh, planning your mission. So, to start this off, we'll go into the basic menus. First thing you'll see is the choice of your planes. You have a few different planes here. You have your medium fighter, light bomber, light interceptor, light fighter, medium bomber, and medium interceptor. These all behave very differently based on four stats that you can see in the bottom left. Uh, that's their durability, which is how much damage they can take, their speed, maneuverability, and acceleration. Because of the difference in these, uh, you can get uh, some very interesting effects. For example, the medium bomber here uh, essentially is like a flying tank, whereas the light fighter behaves a lot more like, um, well, a bit more like a viper from Battlestar Galactica. So it takes some getting used to with their different forms. And uh, yeah, it's also important to note that the faster you're going, the slower you turn. So just because something has a high maneuverability doesn't mean it can necessarily turn quickly if you're going very fast. These also have difference in their avionics and payload limits, uh, so it's really important to choose the correct type of plane for whatever you're planning on doing. So let's see, to start off I'll use the medium interceptor, and we'll go out into the loadout. Now, your loadout is also very important, and you have a lot of variety for this. You have a whole bunch of different types of weapons that you can only have four on your plane at any time. You also have your special, which is at the moment limited to just flares or nothing. And then your arrow mod, which is special modifications. And finally, your skin, which can be any one of these here, likely probably more in the future. So next is the arrow lab. You can see in the top left there is a scrap count right here. You get scrap from killing enemies and destroying facilities, and you can use that to buy things here, such as guns, missiles, bombs, and the arrow mod modifications. So, one important thing to note here is that every single weapon that you're going to see in the game, at least so far, has a description here. It explains uh, its name on the uh, on the top left, the type of, uh, of sight it uses on the right, the amount of ammunition, damage it does, range, speed, payload, and avionics cost. It's really important that if you're going to be using a weapon, you know what kind of weapon it is. For example, the Sidewinder can be a bit tricky to use, I still don't know how to use it. However, fire and forget means once it's locked uh, and you've fired it, you don't need to do any kind of aiming. There's semi-active, there's the MIRV, which splits into multiple missiles, which all lock on and can lock onto multiple targets. They're unguided, which means it doesn't have any kind of guide system at all. Uh, there are cluster bombs, uh, air to ground, fire and forget, all sorts of things. Don't know why there's a slight typo there, but regardless, so it's important to know what kind of weapon you're using so that you can use it to the most effectiveness, or the highest effectiveness. So once you have all that, the next thing to do, I'm going to just change out. I can't do that, can I? Oh, never mind. So once you've done all that, you can uh, start launching your plane. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to go in the opposite direction and get away from all of the enemies so that I can discuss the UI and some other aspects of the game. 
and uh, without getting shot at. May take a minute here. So, the UI. The UI is very, very simple, but you may not understand it completely. Uh, the first thing you can see at the very top left is your scrap count. You'll see this go up as you kill enemies. Below that is your speed. This is a white line uh, going up and down the uh, screen. The thinner bar, uh, the shorter, uh, so you say shorter, longer, thinner bar, is your current speed. Whereas the thicker, stubbier bar is the current push on the engine. That means what kind of acceleration you're uh, you're trying to push the engine to go to. Uh, the bar on the left that stays static is just what splits it in half. Same goes for the altitude. It's very similar. If you want to be going uh, perfectly flat and even, then you'll see my uh, my current, the uh, the bar that's there. As I change my angle up and down, you can see that the thinner bar is changing to accommodate that. And if I have it going slightly below the horizon, you'll see the stubbier bar, which indicates my current altitude, goes down accordingly. So relatively sensical, but it's a UI system I haven't seen used before very often. So uh, it may take a little bit of getting used to. Next, in the right below the speed, in a kind of strange way, you'll see something that is uh, has a times five or x five. That is your current flare count keep track of it because unlike most weapons it does not respawn or unlike most things in your play it does not respawn so once you've used them you do not have any more and you will have to respawn to get more below that is your status bar which is essentially just your health bar when it is completely red it is full when it is completely gone then you have no health and you are dead uh, bottom right below the altitude is your currently selected weapon you can see an image of what it looks like along with its name, in this case, the Micro Missile. Uh, on the left hand side, it also says uh, the current number you have on the plane, which I have six. If I fire all of them, I have zero. The arrow that goes towards that number indicates that that weapon is recharging, which means that you don't have to land to pick up more ammo, you just automatically get more. That's kind of interesting, but, uh,. <coughs> an interesting way of doing it nonetheless. In the very center of your screen is your targeting. Different weapons will have different targeting. For example, the gun just has a small reticle pointing in the general direction, uh, whereas the Merv has a large area and uh, any enemy within this area in your sights can be targeted, and the micro missile is relatively similar. I'm not sure the exact intention of having those slightly different, but uh, they are there regardless. After going on to the UI, it should be your controls. F, which I'll press now, fires your flares. Let's see if we can get some image of that. Yep, that's your flares right there, so just hit F. And those do have a short uh, time to, uh, to load back into the plane. Excuse me, I'm still sick left mouse button fires that you've seen before, and in order to free look around your plane, simply hold the right mouse button. Though mind you, if your plane is at a funky angle, this can behave a little bit strangely, and it probably does need some fixing, so just be careful using this in, uh, in battle. If you have a currently selected target, you can hit E to lock onto them, and uh, or I should say to lock your camera to them sure why it's doing that. Oh, I'm sorry, at this point there's no more water for some reason because I've gone too far out from the map, so we can just ignore that. So, let's see. Uh, if you hold Q, a small menu will pop up that allows you to select what weapon you want, or at least I should be able to. Don't know why I can't. Oh, sorry, hold Q and then use the arrow keys. Uh, to select the weapon you want, up will go to the micro, right will go to the gun, left to the merv, and down would go to another weapon if I had it. <coughs> you can also tap Q to go to your next selected weapon. And let's see, let's see, let's see. 
A and D are rudder control, even though this plane doesn't really have rudders that move. As you can see, my rudders don't move when I turn. But while this rudder control may seem very, very minor, especially at high speeds, this can be very, very useful if you are a bomber for making slight adjustments to make sure your bomb hits its course. Or hits its course. Let's see. Uh, as would be fairly obvious, W accelerates, S decelerates, and your mouse uh, controls your aim. And let's see, what else? Uh, you can also use a gamepad if you have one. It's pretty recommended as uh, controlling is a bit easier than using the mouse. So you can invert the X and Y if you feel like it. So, let's see. Let's respawn here so we can get back into the game. So if you notice, you start off on a carrier, and all around you is procedurally uh, generated terrain. This is never the same two times, though it does always contain some elements, such as the command center, the large building right there, and a couple others. It may or may not contain certain sky carriers or other vehicles or buildings, depending. So, let's see, each of these has a slightly different purpose. Some launch drones and fighters, some tell those drones and fighters where your location is, some provide fuel, uh, all really depends. I don't know how deeply it's modeled, for example, I don't know if uh, destroying oil rigs actually affects the uh, length at which planes can follow you. I don't know any of that, as my, en uh, as my fuel source is unlimited. I should probably move my little speaker up there. Microphone, I should say. Turn around here, just so we can get a better view of things. So, let's see. Uh, your goal on each map is to destroy that enemy command center, which I showed you earlier. And uh, if you don't know which one that is, you should be able to select it by pressing spacebar. Oh, I should mention when I was doing controls, the spacebar selects your enemy, whichever enemy uh, you're within range to select. So that's command center right there. You also get a warning if you're being locked on to. So the command center, as you can imagine, is very, very uh, deeply entrenched with enemy weapons. And it's not wise to go against it if you don't have uh, everything set up in advance. So, let's see. Um, I don't know if to clear the island everything has to be dead or just the command center. I've always killed everything else before killing the command center, but you can experiment around and see if you can leave like an oil rig or two sitting around. Uh, let's see, next. <coughs> Despite it being unrealistic, water is death. Touching it, no matter what your speed or angle is, will always destroy your plane 100% of the time. You will die and lose all your progress. So don't even bother. Uh, the next thing is, is that Choose your weapons carefully if you have multiple. Uh, like I said earlier, they all behave differently, and some weapons can't be used for some purposes. For example, uh, in this case, the MERV can be used against an oil rig, but certain weapons can't be used against ground targets, and certain weapons can't be used against air targets, and some are just too weak or too ineffective against certain types of targets. So it's important to uh, choose those wisely be effective. So let's see. Uh, if you're getting low on health, then what I'm going to suggest you to do is to return to your sky carrier or a water carrier if you have one depending. Your sky carrier is marked in green uh, with four green triangles. You can see it through the cloud. I'm facing it right now. And uh, like I said, later levels they may be on the water, uh, or they may be in the sky, it really just depends. But if you want to land on them, there is something very important for you to know. Uh, it has a set of arrows pointing down a short runway. You need to be following those arrows, and you need to be going at your slowest speed in order to land. 
If you don't, you will die, regardless of how slow you're going. So I'll do a quick demonstration of how to properly land, and uh, then we can move on to some other stuff. So as you can see, at slower speeds, controls become a lot more sensitive. And I'm holding S continuously, straightening out, hovering just above, and there we are. Perfect landing. Now that I've landed, my health, flares, and everything else is recharged. I can select a different type of flight if I want to, change my loadout, spend my scrap on weapons or tools, and uh, move on. It's important, and uh, I think a lot of people miss out on this. At the beginning of the game, there are a lot of air targets and ground targets. Your goal, in, at least in my perception, should be to take out the major air targets, then use some weaponry, like a light bomber, like the Condor, to take out anything that is uh, launching air fighters, such as an aerodome, uh, or a sky carrier. Once that's done, then use a larger bomber, like the medium bomber, or just a light bomber, if you have uh, UB-1 bombs, and uh, knock out all the ground targets one by one at a high altitude where you can't be hit by uh, surface-to-air missiles or an uh, anti-aircraft artillery, and then you should be able to win. I mean, it's it's not super difficult in theory. It gets a little bit more tricky on later levels where more new enemies pop up and uh, things get a little bit different. Game gets a little bit mixed up. So, uh, yeah. Final thing, I suppose, or second to last thing I'll be noting is some of the bugs. There are three major ones I've noticed so far. Uh, for example... Uh, your plane won't be movable at first when you've launched. You'll need to actually fire any one of your weapons before you can uh, use your mouse to aim your plane around. It's uh, just something to note so you don't get killed right off the bat if you're having difficulty controlling the vehicle. Uh, second, let's see. Um, some weapons can't be reselected, and I don't know why. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Hold on. Bugs it out of there. Wanted to show you an example of that. For example, I have the Merv here. You can see I have two other choices, a Vulcan or an Unguided. And I deselect it, and I can't reselect it. I have free payload and avionics, plenty enough to hold a Merv. I'll even go down and prove it to you. If you want to see it. The Merv flailed, payload 20, avionics 80. I have more than enough free, I have a free slot, nothing else has changed, yet I can't reselect it. And the only way I've seen to fix this is, well, you really, you can't. I mean, you're stuck. You either have to restart the game, or uh, launch another plane, or launch this plane, and then land, and then come back again. It takes a full menu reset for that option to come back and this to be reset to its vanilla settings. And uh, next, if uh, if you have a high-powered graphics card, you're going to be a little bit upset because uh, V-Sync does not work correctly. Uh, when I'm not recording, I'm getting somewhere around 400 to 500 frames per second, which is completely unnecessary. Uh, the human eye can only detect about 29.93 frames per second, as any expert will tell you. And above that, you're just wasting your graphics card's power, which means that my graphics card is attempting to pump out four to 500 uh, frames per second, which is making it heat up very quickly for no reason. And with V-Sync, it would lock that down to 30, and uh, this game would be using almost none of my graphical power for this computer. So important thing to note if for some reason your graphics card is crazy overheating. So, uh, that covers that, and next is my opinion. First of all, there is one major complaint. There's only two sets of music, one for the menu, one for playing, and that really isn't enough. It gets very repetitive, and while it is a good track, more would be really, really appreciated. Plus, you can't adjust the volume on the music, so if you get tired of it, unless you mute the game entirely, which isn't very good, especially for warning signals, 
you're pretty much stuck. Um, I think the gameplay is very fun and exciting, and uh, it's very challenging, especially at higher levels. You'll find once you get past Island 1, you'll think that you are just the best person ever, and then you'll get onto Island 2, and you will die, and lose all your progress, and you feel very sad. So uh, get used to that. It's never really easy permanently. It's it's always a step ahead of you, so to speak, which is good. I like that in a game. And finally, I think it's very promising. It has a lot of upward potential for more planes, more weapons. Uh, let's see, I mean, there could be heavy fires, heavy and light inter... Oh, wait, no, there's a light interceptor, but heavy interceptor, heavy bomber, and uh, a couple other planes. Uh, there could be a lot more weapons, a lot more arrow mods, a lot more specials, a lot more skins. And, uh, yeah, uh, as long as this doesn't become vaporware uh, and doesn't end up just disappearing, I think it could be great. Right now, the game is name your own price, which means you can get it for free if you want. But if you're feeling generous, please give some money to the developers. I feel this game really deserves it. Uh, so that sums up the uh, TTT, or Tutorial Tips and Tricks, video for Skyrogue. If you liked, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. This is the Gamer Unknown, out.